Borodol Dunn. Thank you. Senator Macdonald. Thank you very much, Acting Deputy President. The most recent flood in northern Australia has seen floodwaters extend from the Gulf uh, south for hundreds of kilometres. And it is shocking and it is frankly distressing the complete lack of interest and support from this federal government. And in opposition, Minister Murray Watt was full of advice on the speed of response and what the government should do. All, all advice that he has now completely forgotten. As Australians, we care about this region. It grows a huge amount of food, it extracts significant resources. It is a critical front line for defence for Australia, and it has, yes, only a few, but they are proud communities. Flooding is not new, and neither should the government's response be. Owners of the Tirana Springs Roadhouse, 34 kilometres southwest of Burketown, Jill and Tim Wilson, their children, Hunter Six and Holly Four, and their brother-in-law, Mick Wilson, were rescued off the back of a truck by a mustering chopper. They have lost their home and their business. The fences are flattened or missing. The generators and pumps are gone. Their home and business is saturated, and all their hard work over the past five years lies covered in mud. Three horses, pigs, potty calves and poultry all drowned. But now they're worried about the insurance company paying the $3.2 million reconstruction bill. I can tell you other stories about Roxburgh Station. The young woman, Courtney McMillan, has done a terrific job about talking about what they have done, uh, building a levee around their property uh, in order to protect the homestead, the station workers' uh, quarters, and trying to protect a little bit of their country uh, there. Urundangi, where the floodwaters swept that town away as well. There are stories like this right across the top of North Queensland and into the Northern Territory. There are people who have been rescued, plucked out of the waters uh, by mustering helicopters, by neighbours who have come to the aid of using uh, heavy equipment to try and build defence walls, uh, and communities have come together. And in 2019, we learnt lessons from flooding in the north. When the northwest monsoon event happened, uh, we learnt lessons and we learnt them fast. Disaster relief payments were made quickly. We didn't have to wait uh, the, the week or more until that $1,000 per person and $400 per child was announced by the, by the emergency services minister. The prime minister came. The defence force was called in. The army choppers dropped fodder to save stock. 150 Australian Defence Force members were involved. 70 were working in Richmond, Julia Creek and Cloncurry. And they delivered 32,000 litres of fuel to affected communities using transport aircraft. Defence planners and advisers working with local, state and federal government at Julia Creek. And the ADF team, it included three engineering officers, an aviation officer, a vet, a logistics officer and an environmental health specialist. The RAAF delivered personal protective equipment and fuel drums were where needed. The local transport department finally got approvals made to allow stock that were washed up against fences to be buried. The coalition pledged $3.1 billion in aid all up for North and North West Queensland. So why didn't the Queensland Government ask for help this time? Why didn't they ask for the army to be called in? People are angry. They're asking, where are the Premier's regular press conferences? Where's the Prime Minister? They're saying to me, cattle don't vote, and they're feeling abandoned. It doesn't matter what the government says it's doing. It's the perception of the people on the ground that's damning, and that's important. We have to address this debacle that is preventing people from accessing, fun accessing funds. And it's been nearly a week to allow them to release the special $1,000 payments for people who have lost everything, whose houses are gone, whose motor vehicles are underwater, who can't get work. So what is needed now? Well, in the most immediate time, we need mechanics to go on to remote communities, stations and 
uh, other places, to repair generators, to get the power back on, to fix farm equipment, to get Toyotas and, and other equipment running. And I thank most sincerely the civilian mechanics from as far away as Toowoomba who have volunteered their services. We are truly grateful. And in the future, we have got to start thinking about what the infrastructure requirements are. To, uh, Normanton had been cut off since the 3rd of January because of the wet season. Can you imagine saying to Canberra, giddy up everybody, you'll be out of contact for at least two months. You will not be able to drive out of this town because of seasonal floodwaters. And yet that's what the people of Normanton are facing. We need better culverts. We need the Birkenwills Roadhouse and the adjoining airstrip. We need that sealed and we need wet season drops, 5,000 litres of diesel, 5,000 litres of jet fuel, just to start to make sure we have a, a launching pad for floods into uh, the far north region of Queensland. Because these communities are cut off every year. Cowan Yama was cut off for six months of last year. Six months. Where else in Australia is that acceptable? Well, I can tell you it's nowhere else. They need that road sealed. They need bridges built up to cross rivers to allow them for longer crossing periods. This strength of being resilient, which is what happens in North Queensland and other parts of Northern Australia, I'm afraid is also a weakness because regional people have learned to just get on with it and not wait for help. But it is not good enough to let these people be isolated each wet season and then completely forgotten in a flood event. Regional and remote Australians are used to having to, have a go, having to go to each other's aid and look after themselves. And this flood has proved no different. I could stand here for hours and tell you stories of neighbours assisting neighbours. I could tell you of rescuing families, of moving stock, of protecting properties. The importance of Northern Australia must be reflected in this government's policy making and planning. And I'm afraid that it is sadly, sadly lacking at present. The Northern Australia Minister couldn't even be bothered commenting to the media about these floods. And Senator Watt turned up last Friday. The latest media release from the Minister for Northern Australia about Northern Australia was on the 2nd of February. There has been radio silence since. And in that 2nd of February media release, it was about floods in northern Western Australia. There's been nothing about the Territory and nothing about North Queensland. Why? Why? What signal does that send if the, if the Minister for Northern Australia doesn't even care about these things? So it is sad that this Labor government has spent years politicising natural disasters, demanding more to be done. And yet when the responsibility lies with them, missing in action, full of excuses of what, why they are doing less, and after so zealously and viciously attacking the Coalition's response to the Lismore floods, you'd think Labor might get its own house in order. It takes a special level of hubris to follow such strident criticism with what they have offered in North West Queensland. We know that state and federal Labor do not care about the regions. We know they will not fight for regional communities. And these recent flooding events have just highlighted that once again. People feel that Labor has gone missing in action when regional Queensland has faced a crisis. Why is it that the Premier can so quickly respond to floods in South East Queensland, a region full of Labor seats, but takes the time to say anything else about regions that they don't hold any seats in. And when people have been through a disaster like this, they need to feel that their government is standing with them. And when they don't see any serious presence from the, from the Prime Minister, from the Premier, what do you think they feel? Why have they not been to Burketown, to Doomagy, to Urundangi to offer real assistance to those people in need? Is it because there's no red carpet to roll out, no flashy press conference? Why is Murray Watt not calling out the Queensland Premier for not visiting these towns and communities? I can quote Murray Watt all night, 
but in his very own words, no more excuses, no Thank more you. obfuscation, no more blaming the states. Thank Just you, take Senator responsibility. McDonald.